Hello everybody and welcome back to our Traffic Manager Present Edition tutorial series. This is the final episode, I'm KRX, and this is the episode where we're going to look at all the buttons we didn't cover, right? If we open up this toolkit, we're going to notice there's a bunch of buttons here we didn't cover. Some of these are useful and quick to explain. Some of these are, I think, relatively not useful, but tell me in the comments if you actually think they are useful or tell me what I don't know. Um, some of the ones that I like, parking restrictions. This one is fantastic. We can go in here and we can disable the ability for cars to park here. This doesn't affect traffic flow as parked cars don't actually bog down the, the moving cars on the roads, but it is good for uh, aesthetics, right? If certain roads just, you don't want people parking there because it's a high flow road. It's just, a, it's a main road. I mean, you know, you wouldn't have people parking on, on a really, really busy boulevard, not directly on the street. It just kind of depends on where it is in the city and in the flow of the, how many cars are on there and stuff like that. So you could very easily just disable the parking lots. You can hold shift, right? That'll apply to the entire row. And then of course you can do each side of the road independently of each other, which is also very cool. So that's really, really fun to do. Of course, if you're using realistic parking, this can be both a bad thing to disable the parking lots if you need more parking, but it could also be a good thing because it could force people to stop parking on the road and start parking in your parking lots that you've created. So that's a really cool thing to use. I'm using it constantly, especially if I'm using realistic parking AI that is added with the traffic manager mod as a setting, right? We talked about that. The other thing that's really basic is the priority signs. Here we go. So with priority signs, we can actually click on different junctions, right? Here's junctions and stuff. And we can either add yield signs or stop signs. Very simple. Of course, you can add stop signs in the base game. It's totally fine. You can add stop signs, but these people are coming onto a roundabout, so we can have them yielding. We can have them yielding. I typically don't use this because the AI is really, really dumb when it comes to yielding. If they even detect that any car is even remotely on the way, they'll stop and wait and wait and wait. They just don't have enough get up and go to get in there to interject themselves. Look at this. This is the perfect example. See how that this car right here could have easily went, but it waited for this little moped to come back from way back over here. If you have a lot of traffic, this is not going to solve traffic issues. This is going to cause traffic issues, but it's still a little interesting thing. It's very thematic. You might want to use it in certain areas, especially if they're slower areas. So that is how you add yield signs and traffic stop signs. This button right here clears the traffic. Very good to do if you had a big backup and you made a lot of changes and you just want to see how's it going to work and maybe it's not getting unclogged on its own. Clearing the traffic in about you know three to four minutes, it'll be completely back to where it was. Except for those changes that you made are now in effect, so it might never actually create that issue that you were dealing with in the first place. So every once in a while I like to clear the traffic just if things are so backed up it's just going to be a nightmare to wait for it to all untangle. It's good just to untangle it and then let it retangle if it's going to retangle. Um, and then we can enable and, and disable uh, despawning of vehicles, right? So this is with the exclamation point right there. That means that I have it set so that vehicles cannot despawn. Despawning is disabled right now. If I turn, if I hit this button, a little ghost car, that means that they can despawn. So this is that setting that we talked about in the actual mod setting that you can just flip on the fly right here. You can just flip it on the fly. So a more realistic setting would be this. And then the vanilla game would be this, where it, it allows cars to despawn if they get stuck. So this is the more realistic setting. I typically play with that, uh, with this by disabling the despawn uh, mechanic of the base game. Then we have some things that are I don't really use, these three buttons right here that we didn't talk about. This is the lane arrow button. Uh, this lets you sort of customize the lanes like what we did with the lane connector, but here's the thing, they don't work together. And the lane connector to me is just like infinitely superior and it's just easier to use. I, I feel like this is probably something that existed in the older game. If we make adjustments with this, it we can't make adjustments if we've already made adjustments here. They don't they don't work together. If someone in the comments uh, knows what this is about, let me know. Let me know how we can use this un in, in a unique way because for me, I just use the lane connector. Uh, we have manual traffic lights. Um, I don't really know exactly what these things are all about. To me, this seems like we talked extensively about time traffic lights. So for me, the manual traffic lights seem like a weird in-between. It's like you can kind of do some customizations, but not a lot of customizations. I really don't, I don't like this. I don't, I don't like this. I, I, if I'm going to do a time traffic light and I'm going to do a custom one, I'm going to do a proper time traffic light and set it up from the ground up. This seems like a, like a half measure. 
and I'm not really sure how that actually like works. But we also get the button to just switch traffic lights on and off. So very simply, we could just toggle them on and off. Of course, this was added to the game in a free patch, but this is a convenient little button to have up here if you just wanted to mass uh, click on some traffic lights or click them off. So there you go. Those are the buttons we didn't cover. And that is the end of the traffic manager tutorial. And uh, at this point, we've covered all the other things in excruciating detail. I think at this point, it's fair to say. So that is a complete overview of the traffic manager mod. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching uh, this episode and the past episodes as well. Uh, we do have a tutorial traffic tutorial series where we actually apply this stuff to fix actual traffic. That's something I uploaded a long time ago, and it's still good. It still goes through these different features, talks about them, but it then applies them. Whereas here, we're more sort of uh, just commentating on and sort of speculating how we could use these in, in, in situations where there's traffic. Because of course, this is just a little test city. It doesn't really have any traffic. It's not big enough to have traffic yet. Of course, we're doing this stuff all the time on our Twitch cities. So on the Twitch channel, when we are getting cities that have 70,000 pop or 150,000 pop, we are getting traffic issues. And we are resolving those traffic issues by working through uh, the various issues with the Traffic Manager mod tools, right? By, by applying these different tools and in tandem with each other, then we're able to fix a lot of really, really interesting traffic problems in interesting ways. So thank you so much, everybody. And I will see you guys in the next one.